Well, hello. Nice to have you back. We are in Mexico, Missouri. Well, actually in Columbia, Missouri. You know, everything looks the same, same trees, same plants, but it feels different. And it's certainly a lot louder. We're visiting one of the Audubon centers. You see, I got my binoculars, I got my Merlin app, and we're ready to check out all the birds. We were just told that there are hundreds of robins, and I haven't seen a single robin back in Quebec in probably a week and a half. Hummingbirds are still here as well, and I haven't seen any in probably two weeks back at home. So let's go see what we can find in Missouri. So far in 10 minutes, we've seen, I don't know, 25 robins, probably 10 to 15 titmice, red-bellied woodpeckers, downy hairy woodpeckers. We even noticed a pileated it flew right over us. So right now I'm just sitting here quietly and watching the birds. Listen to this, see how many birds you can recognize. There's a whole bunch of cedar waxings right there. It's fun to see that they have bluebird boxes everywhere as well. I'm actually going to open one to see what's happening inside. The nests have been cleared out, or so are they still there? No, this one is nailed shut, so I can't really see what's happening inside. Let's go see the other one. I just noticed how well this bluebird nest box is placed. So you see, bluebirds like to have a tree or wires close by to the box, but not too, too close. And then the box is facing an open field. And there is a baffle. This is a perfect way to set up a bluebird box. There is a creek here, but it's a, a bit dry. Um, I saw that they have kingfishers here. I'd love to see one, but I don't know. Lots of butterflies. We've seen a lot of monarchs. That's very refreshing. Hi David, here's a letter from Ken. Dr. Bird, my grandson saw a large bird which he believed to be a hawk eating grass. Do hawks eat vegetation? I thought that they were only carnivores. Hi Ken. Your grandson's observation of a hawk eating grass was very interesting, although I have to admit it was lacking in detail. As a scientist with over 45 years of training, I've come to not easily dismiss such odd happenings. To start with, I checked out my most solid source of information on the most common of our North American raptors, the red-tailed hawk. Nary a word on its eating vegetation of any kind. As I expected, hawks are strictly carnivorous. Here are some possible explanations for your grandson's sighting. First, maybe the hawk was somehow ingesting insects associated with the grass. Second, it could have been pulling at the grass to get at something underneath, say a mouse nest. Third, it could have been a very young, inexperienced bird that was merely experimenting by grabbing and tugging at non-food items. Fourth, hawks do use grasses as part of their nest construction, and perhaps this bird was collecting grass to line its nest. In any case, when I attend my next meeting of raptor experts, I do plan to pick their brains on this subject. Who knows what I might learn? 
Some days I just don't know who is smarter, humans or birds. The list of intelligent birds seems to get longer and longer by the hour. Just recently, a Hawaiian crow, a bird that exists only in captivity, surprised everyone. This bird found a piece of food stuck somewhere in the log, so it went and got a stick, realized the stick was too long, so it chewed on it, making it short enough to get the food out. So intelligent. And then there are pigeons that can actually read. A group of researchers exposed pigeons to regular words and some gibberish. By the end of the test, pigeons could recognize 25 to 30 actual words amongst 8,000 of random combinations. Green energy is always a hot topic, but renewable sources of energy are not as good for the environment as we think. Solar farms superheat the air and can burn the birds, and wind farms pose a lot of threats to any birds that are flying around. In fact, the province of Saskatchewan has just turned on a wind farm project because the Ministry of the Environment is afraid of the negative impact it will have on the bird population. While in Japan, unfortunately, they don't have any choice. They have to use wind farms to generate energy, so they have to become innovative when trying to protect birds. Recently, they've been placing stickers that look like big eyes right on the windmills, and since then, they haven't found any dead birds. Perhaps they should talk to Saskatchewan. Will Harris is a son of a cattle farmer in Georgia. When he was growing up on the farm, he didn't like the way cattle were raised. So when he got older, he decided to open his own free-run organic chicken ranch. Everything was going great until a bald eagle showed up. Before he knew it, he had over 75 bald eagles living around his farm, each snatching up three to four chickens a day. Because bald eagles are federally protected, there was nothing Will could do. Keeping the chickens indoors wasn't an option either, so Will opened his farm to tourists. For a small fee, you can visit the farm and you can watch bald eagles gorging themselves on organic chickens. As Will says now, we used to give 10% to the church, now we give 10% to nature, which he prefers. I always like festivals that combine different aspects of nature, like the Wings and Wildflowers Festival that will take place from the 14th to the 16th of October at Venetian Gardens in Leesburg, Florida. There will be over 100 activities and programs with over 25 birding, wildflower and nature experts that will be leading tours, giving speeches and doing workshops. Have fun, everyone! Some of you asked me to follow up on all the new foods that I introduced in my backyard and here's what happened. I came back from my trip to Missouri and I found that all the feeders that were filled with the suet pellets were absolutely empty. The one with the worms um, hasn't been that popular. I actually moved it to a different location, a little bit closer to my house. Um, we'll see how that goes. If it's still not as popular, then I'm going to empty this feeder and put the worms in a platform feeder. Perhaps ground feeders will be more interested in worms than, uh, you know, let's say chickadees or nut hatches or blue jays or wherever else this is my backyard. All right, so I still have a lot of stock, so I'll be moving things around and I will definitely keep you up to date. And now let's move to a winner's circle. So we have one more episode on season one to go. You can submit your pictures for the episode 52. However, there will be no contest on the first episode of season two. We will be announcing all the new rules and all the new things that will be happening for the rest of the season. And now let's check out the top five this week. And the winner this week is Dennis Stroud with his beautiful picture of the Louisiana heron. Congratulations, Dennis. Thank you for all your support. We're sending you this feeder. I don't think you have it in your collection, so enjoy it. I'll see you next week. 
Well, goodbye, everyone. Next week is our last episode of season one. I'll see you then. 